Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is giving me my review for Bates Motel Season 2, Episode 2, Shadow of a Doubt. And, oh my god, guys, this episode left me in total shock. I still am, you know, I'm, I'm still in, in total shock right now. I really, it, it left me in total shock, and I just got done watching it, and just, I'm in total shock right now at what happened at the ending. The ending was so good, and I can't wait to see what happens, you know, what else is gonna happen. But, um, this episode was amazing. It really was. And it's not that last week's episode wasn't as amazing. It was that last week's episode was more of a, uh, character type of episode. More of an episode where we got to see the aftermath of things, which was still fine. This episode was just ten times better than that. Um, I really love where they're going with some of these storylines. And I think the most surprising thing, you know, the most surprising storyline was the whole musical thing. That was actually a very good storyline. I, I didn't know if I was going to like that storyline. However, you know, since I'm into musicals, I mean, hello, guys and dolls, I, no, you guys haven't even, I'm in my school musical, that's why, I, that's the whole reason why I haven't made any videos all week. Um, it still was kind of a shock for me, but um, let's just get to this episode. So as we know, um, Bradley went to, Bates, Bates went to the motel, stayed with Norman, and she's actually staying in the motel now. And she's not telling him the reason why, you know, she just, she just, she won't tell him. And we know, we know why she's saying that, but she won't tell him. Uh, you know, he looks very surprised, and he doesn't really know what to do. Now, in the meantime, Norma's at the doctor's asking about, uh, blackouts for Norma, and she lies to the doctor saying it's for her sister. Um, because she, she just, she wants, she wants to, um, say it's for her sister, but it's really for Norma, and we know that. And the doctor tells her that it could be a mental disorder of some sort. Norma looks worried after hearing that, and uh, she doesn't really know what to do. So she decides, so she's buying books. She knows it's a mother and son reading books, and she looks to be a bit envious of them. Hope, you know, probably thinking that, you know, oh, I wish this is what me and Norman were. They used to be that way, but they're not that way anymore. She's probably just very, you know, she's very envious of them. Um, so she talks to Norman, and what happens if she asks Norman if he wants to do a musical? Now, when this came out of nowhere, honestly, I laughed at it because I never thought of something like this on a show like Bates Motel. However, I actually really love this plot, not just because I love musicals. I mean, I'm a softie for musicals. I, you, I want, you know that. You guys know that. Um, but, you know, what happens is she talks to him about possibly doing this musical with him. And she talks about how they used to sing a lot when he was younger. And um, the phone begins to ring. She goes to answer the call. And it turns out the call is for Norman, and it's br actually Bradley's mom that's on the phone. She asks where Norman is, and he tells her that she, you know, she asks Norman where Bradley is, and he tells her that he hasn't seen or talked to her in a while. So Norman asks Norman about what happened, and it turns out that Bradley has actually gone missing. Um, you know, no one knows where she is. She's staying there, and Norman is basically in charge of her at this point. So Norman goes back to eating, and then uh, Dylan is feeling very suspicious about him. Uh, Dylan goes to talk to Norman in his room, wants to know if Norman knows where Bradley is, and Norman denies knowing anything, because as we know, Dylan kind of likes Bradley, and they might, you know, Dylan and Bradley, they kind of like each other. Um, so Dylan is about to leave, and Norman tells him that she might already be dead. So he basically just lied to his brother's face. Uh, so Norman's at the grocery store, standing around, looking at one of the shelves, and at the cash register, he notices a flyer on Bradley's face, with Bradley's face on it, saying, Missing Person. So then we see this woman at a cash register, who could potentially become a love interest for Norman. I think she's going to become his, his next love interest. Um, and she notices a die in his basket, asks about it, and he makes a great save and says it's for his mom. But as we know, you know, it's actually for Bradley. He, um, Norman's going through his room, finds a stash of money, looks in, sees if there's enough for Bradley. And then Norma calls up Norman and looks around for him. She ends up going into the basement to look for him. Bradley quickly hides not to be found. Norman appears, catches his mom before she could find Bradley. And Norman has downloaded sheet music for them to sing. Uh, Norman has downloaded sheet music for them to sing for the audition of the musical. We get this nice, cute little scene when Norman's singing Mr. Sandman like we saw in the promo um, when this season first started. We got to see that in this episode. I thought it was a cute scene, honestly. You know, I liked it. And uh, they play the song. And she asks if she knows the song. He says he doesn't, though that's not the truth. And, that, you know, he plays Mr. Sandman. And he says that he'll make an house out of himself for her. Um, 
So then what happens is Norman is helping Bradley dyeing her hair, and he gives, and basically she's just looking for a fresh new start. She basically has faked her death. That's why she jumped into the, um, that's the whole reason why she jumped into the pool, is because she wanted to fake her death, basically. She wanted people to think she died there. Um, you know, her mother knows she didn't die there, but she wants people to think she's dead, basically. That's the whole reason why she did everything last week. It makes kind of, it kind of makes sense now. Um, she's dyeing her hair, she has a plane ticket, and he tells her, and he, she has a bus, not a plane ticket, a bus ticket, and, uh, she thanks Norm for everything, and she asks if he can help to drive her to get her out of town, he says he will, and that he will borrow his mom's car. He promises her this, however, it doesn't exactly work. Now, then we get a huge scene where Norma is making a bed, she finds a cutout of a newspaper and a pearl necklace, takes them both, hides them back underneath the mattress of the bed, and so now they're at the auditions, there are a lot of people there, they meet up with this uh, girl, Christine, and the, it, the, this is the woman who's behind the whole audition process. They're waiting for the audition, and Bradley is packing up her things, getting ready to leave. Looks like the line of people is waiting for the audition, and we see that Norman keeps checking his phone, um, you know, checking his watch, making sure he's not too late to drive Bradley. So Norman tells Norma that he has to be somewhere at 8, and Norma tells him to cancel. He says he doesn't want to, and he ends up walking out of the auditorium. And here we get an amazing scene from uh, Vera Farmiga and, and from Norma and Norman. The scene is just amazing. Um, Norma's yelling at him, screaming at him, basically saying, "What are you doing?" And Norman says, "You know, you need to stop." Norman basically says, "Why do we keep doing these sort of things? Why do you just get these random ideas for us to do this?" And she basically says, "I just want us to do something fun together." But then she does admit the truth that she is scared. She's terrified, she's scared, she doesn't know what's going to happen. She does tell him about finding the pearls, um, you know, and he basically said he left them in his pockets, and uh, she really, she just, she's terrified for her son right now. She's very scared for her safety, and uh, that's what it is. She's just very scared for him. Um, but Norman does tell her that they'll do the audition. They go to the audition, but then he calls up Dylan and says Dylan has, has to drive Bradley to the bus stop to restart her life, and he tells him why she's there and asks him to drive her instead. And then he has to admit to her that she killed Gil. And more about that later when we get to Dylan's plot. And Norma said she doesn't have sheet music, but then she sings maybe this time. And honestly, Vera Farmiga has an amazing voice. Um, that was really an amazing performance, and I thought she did a great job there. So definitely, I like the little. I like that they got to, we got to see her sing in this episode as well. I'm wondering if we're going to see more about that um, next week, but I'm not. I don't really know. So then, um, he told, he had told, um, Norma that he'd call up Emma, which he does. And before this, though, Dylan is eating at a restaurant Bra with Bradley, then a bus arrives. He tells her about how it killed Norman to not be the one doing this for her. And Dylan needs her to write a suicide note because of, of someone, because of Zane looking for the killer of Gil. So Bradley begins writing her fake suicide note, and Norman arrives back in the was hell with his mother. And Emma arrives and tells him they, that they've arrested someone for the murder of Mrs. Watson. And Norma looks very pleased. Um, about the news because it makes her suspicious and uh, her suspicions of Norman being the killer nothing after all so Emma tells Norman that he's got a great mom who cares and the bus drives for Bradley to leave she leaves and he's waiting outside for Dylan Norman's outside waiting for Dylan he arrives at the motel Dylan walks up tells Norman that she's on the bus Norman thanks Dylan for what he's done gives Norman a letter for Bradley to him and Norman looks happy reading it then we get the hugest scene of them all that made my jaw drop we're in a gas station we see a man come up he says he's looking for his sister, his sister, Norma Bates. Yes, this is the brother that Norma said used to rape her. Um, so now it's going to be a hell of a lot of intensity, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where that's going to go, because that was just, oh my god, I was not expecting it at all. If anything, I thought her brother was dead. I thought he was dead. I didn't think we were going to see him again. I thought that was, this was just made for us, you know, just to, I, I don't know, I knew this was going to go somewhere, but I didn't really know where, and this is so good now, I can't wait to see where else this is going to go, it's so big, and I never would have expected it, and I love it so much, it's really great, um, but the main plot, so strong, love the Bradley and Norman stuff, love the Norma and Norman scene at the theater, that scene was amazing, and, um, now let's get to the subplot, which had to do with Dylan, Sheriff Romero, and, um, this new guy, um, this new guy, um, what's his name? Um, I don't, I don't know his name. Um, alright. So he's driving out to find Sheriff Romero. Dylan is out trying to find, um, Sheriff Romero. And he finds out that Gil was shot in the head from Romero. 
And Romero tells Dylan that if he knows anything, he should tell him because he will catch whoever murdered Gil. And Dylan is speaking to the man about Gil being dead. He tells Dylan not to worry about it and wait until the cops bring someone in and let him deal with it. Um, he Now, I was very surprised that Dylan did not suspect that it was Bradley when he was the one helping out Bradley all last week. I, I, I would have, you know, if I was Dylan, I would have thought, oh, Bradley might have done it, you know. Um, he really, he didn't know at this point. And uh, so Nick walks away, and then what happens is we have that conversation with Norman and Dylan, like I was saying, and Dylan's talking to Remo, to Remo, and they see uh, Zane from outside. Re Remo doesn't um, doesn't look happy. It cuts to Sheriff Romero, and a fellow cop appears, saying they've got to leave. The cops go and cash some guy's apartment. Uh, crash some guy's apartment. The man runs with drugs on him for the toilet, flushes the drugs down the toilet, jumps off the apartment balcony to escape, and too late, he already got caught by Romero. And um, this scene, that scene was really intense, and I like the way that went. Sheriff Romero is telling the man that they found the apartment that he, that the last person um, to have sex with her. They found due to the um, semen sample, and the man is named Kyle. Uh, Kyle is actually, um, he, he has a feeling that he also killed his old girlfriend, Carly. And Kyle tells Romero that she slept with a lot of guys because she had daddy issues or something. And um, he then asks if he can go. Romero says he's not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, that that's basically what's going on there. They're just finding out more about Miss Watson. It's, it's very big the way that's all going. Uh, Dylan asks Remo who Zane is. Remo tells him he's a Scarface poser and that he was in prison for getting caught with a car full of weeds speeding. And speaking of the devil, Zane drives up. Zane asks for help to get something out of his truck. And both Dylan and Remo walk up to the car and in the trunk is a man named Johnny B. And uh, he asks them to get him out of the trunk. And they take off the tape on his mouth. Zane says that he knows that he and his people killed Gil. Zane wants him to send a message to his boss, and the best message he can give is shooting Johnny B. Remo. Tells them to drop him off at D Nick's house, and then gets in the car and drives away. So, then what happens is, um, you know, the whole thing with Dylan finding Bradley, and, um, you know, he finds Bradley, and she, he wants to write this suicide note because of, you know, Zane looking for the killer of Gil. So, Basically, what's going to happen now is that he's basically made Bradley not a suspect. So, now they're not going to know who it is. Eventually, they're going to find out. You know, this is... They're going to find out. We know it's going it, to... They're going to find out about um, Bradley killing... Um, Bradley killing Gil. And it's not going to be good for either of them. Now, this character of Zane, I'm wondering where he's going to go. He's a very destructive type of character. I'm thinking that he might be the central villain of the season... Until Norma's father showed up. Then I was like, okay, this guy is going to be the central villain of the season now. Um, one of the things that I loved about this episode definitely was um, a lot of um, plot development, a lot of storyline, just a lot going into this episode. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to is seeing uh, the conversation between Norma and her brother when they both meet up. You know, is he going to admit that that is him? You know, not father, brother, I mean, um, her brother meeting up. You know, is he going to admit to Norman that he's her brother? I doubt he will. Uh, does he know that Norman knows the story? You know, I'm really not sure what's going to happen there. Um, and we're still not entirely sure who killed Miss Watson. We're pretty much sure with Gil, but we're still not entirely sure. Do you think that it was Gil or was it Norman? I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. I also really like where Bradley's storyline is going. You know, she's trying to start out, have a fresh life, so she is no longer uh, the suspect of this anymore. She's not part of this anymore. She doesn't want to be part of this um, whole mess. She just, she wants to live a normal life, basically. That's all she wants. She just wants a normal life, which is completely understandable. I understand where she's coming from when she wants that, definitely. Um... But yeah, so the other thing that I also really liked was Dylan. Now he's going to have to cover up this secret that Bradley, you know, killed Gil. And he's going to look out for Bradley. So that's going to be interesting too. It also looks like Dylan's going to meet up with um, Norma's brother, who right now is unnamed. I'm sure we're going to get a name next week. But this episode was still so good. Um, I loved last week's, but this one was like ten times better. It was so good. Um, let me know what you guys saw this episode. What is going to happen now that uh, Norma's brother is in town? What's going to happen there? Um, will Dylan keep the secret of Bradley? I think he will. Uh, where are they, are they going to find out the truth about Bradley? I think eventually they will. 
Um, do you think Bradley will be successful with starting a new life? What do you think is going to happen there? Also, this new girl. She's going to be a love interest in Norman. Do you, do you like her character? I kind of like that. That's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Teen Wolf. So see you then. Bye.